Hey, what's up friends? I'm super excited about this video today because I'm gonna show you my process of creating this artwork from start to finish. This artwork is very special to me and I personally like how it turned out. I really like the colors and the perspective and all the tiny little details. And I'm really glad that most people loved it as well when I posted it last year on my Facebook page. But there's more to this artwork than eye-catching colors and detailed drawing. The process of creating this is, I believe, really worth sharing with all of you guys. So yeah, finally I will reveal my secrets. <laughs> Actually, it is not a secret anymore because if you are following me on my Facebook page, I always post my drawing breakdown there. But today it's gonna be special because I'm gonna discuss a lot of things about my process. Especially how I build the composition to make it more dynamic. And I will talk about some of the tools that I'm using. Also, I am going to share some tips and tricks on the way. So yeah, there are a lot of stuff that I'm going to discuss today, so let's get started. Before I start drawing, I always start with a simple story. And that's the most important part of my drawing process. But to be honest, it's a bit hard to tell a story with just a background art compared to having a character into the scene. I mean, it's easy for an artist to tell a story if there is a character interacting within the background scene. But even without a character, it is still possible to tell your story. Instead of relying on a character, you can use other elements to be the main focus of your artwork. Take a look at this image. It doesn't have any character in the scene, but by observing, we can tell that this is a story of a tornado about to strike a school. The tornado becomes the main focus and it supports the other element like the school to create a more compelling story. The reason why I start with a story is because I don't want my artwork to be just an eye candy or you know just to look beautiful. Though there is nothing wrong with creating an artwork just to show its beauty, but personally what I'm trying to achieve with my drawing is a connection with the audience. I don't want it to be just beautiful, but more importantly, I want it to be relatable. That's why I always start with a story. And the way I make a story is by making a simple statement like this. A beautiful comet lights up the sky of Edsa. That's it. It's just a simple statement and that's all I need. By the way, Edsa is a place in the Philippines where traffic is so heavy every day. I want the comet to symbolize good, not in a moral way, but because it is cool, magical, and beautiful looking. That's the good that I'm talking about. And for the Edsa, I want it to symbolize bad, again, not in a moral sense, but as a way of depicting the worsening traffic, the heat, and the pollution in Edsa. So using that story, I'm moving on to the next process which I called one minute sketch. Basically, it is just a quick sketch made under one minute. It doesn't need to be perfect or detailed, just a quick drawing to lay the foundation of your story. And here I made three sketches. The first sketch shows some buildings and the MRT railroad. Also some cars below, buses, and the comet in the sky. The second sketch shows the MRT train in a side view and some electrical cables from the railroad and the comet and some clouds. The third sketch shows some buildings from afar and electrical cables and of course the comet and some clouds again. Once I'm done doing the sketches, it's time to decide which one should I use as the starting point for the artwork. And the best way to choose is to critic and analyze your own work. I really like how the first sketch turned out, but I'm too concerned that it might be too distracting for the audience since there are a lot of elements in the frame. I also think that the buildings and the railroad take so much space compared to the sky and the comet, causing an imbalance. The second one is too simple, but I like the train. It's a subtle way of showing or telling that this is Edsa without adding too much elements in the frame. 
but the sky in the comet takes so much space compared to the train and the cables. The third sketch is also very simple and there's a balance of space between the sky and the buildings. It has potential but it still needs to be refined. So by analyzing my own sketches and being my own critic, it helps me to see the good and the bad in my drawings. Don't be afraid to do this process because it will save you a lot of headaches at the end. Solving the problems at an early stage can, you know, it can help you lessen your revision. And so, I'm gonna choose one. And I'm going with sketch number three. Anyway, I, I really like the first one, but I think the third sketch has a lot of potential um, to convey my story. But like I said, it still needs to be improved. And by improving, I need to consider the composition. Composition is the way you arrange the elements in a way that is pleasing to the eyes. And I think an effective composition can lead your viewer's eyes to the main focus of your drawing. There are a handful elements of composition, but for this artwork, I'm gonna focus on these four elements. Rule of thirds, leading lines, perspective, and contrast. And by considering these elements, this is how the improved sketch look like now. This is the before, and this is the after. The lamppost is still there, and the buildings, and the cables, and the comet of course. I just added the signage and adjusted the perspective of the drawing. I also added values to separate the foreground and the background. Since I want the comet to be the main focus of the drawing, the rule of thirds can help the viewer to focus on it. Basically, it works by imagining that your image is divided into nine parts. This forms an imaginary grid over your image composed of nine individual boxes, just like this. And according to the rule of thirds, if you place your subject at the point of interest, then it will make a good composition. I honestly don't know how it works, but I really think it works. Aside from focusing on the comet, I also want to lead the viewer's eyes to the other elements like the buildings and the signages and the lamp posts. It's important because I want my target audience to see that the place is actually Edsa. And that's how leading lines can greatly help. Let's look at the sketch again. Your eyes can focus on the comet not only because of the rule of thirds that I mentioned earlier, but also because of the lines created by the other elements in this drawing. These two lampposts on the side helps your eyes to look up because of its line. It's the same thing with the buildings and the metal frame. They created a line that points to the top of the frame. And when you already focus on the comet, the line created by the comet helps the viewer's eyes to look down. Also, the lines of the cables helps to see the other side of the frame. So basically, leading lines encourage the viewer's eyes to wander around the whole drawing, looking at everything and ultimately coming back to the main subject. It creates a visual sense of direction from one part of the image to the other. That's why looking at this image, you instantly focus on the person, right? Even though he is very small. And it's because of the line that the rail track created. Another composition element that I added into the revised sketch is perspective. Since I want the viewer to focus on the comet, I changed the perspective of the drawing by making it like they are looking up the sky. Because that's how we can see a comet in real life, right? If we look up into the sky. So by considering the reality, we can add realism into the artwork as well. Also, in filmmaking, they use low angle shot to make the subject more bigger than the eye and to look more dominant and important. Contrast is another element that I decided to use to differentiate Comet and Elsa. And using color contrast can help the viewer see and feel that these two are entirely different from each other. I will be using cold and bright colors for the comet in the sky to make it like it is magical and beautiful. And I will be using warm colors for Edsa to emphasize its traffic, 
and the lights coming from the cars. But since this is a sketch, I will just show the process of color contrast later. A few inches later. Now that I refined my one minute sketch, the next thing that I do is to make the line art. I usually do just a rough line art, but I make sure that all of the elements are present. Looking at reference images helps me to, you know, build the scene since I often can't rely on my own memory, especially the signage and the metal frame. I don't know how it is made, so reference image will really help you. I'm also using an extension called Perspective Tools. It helps me to create perspective lines with just a couple of clicks. And it's a lifesaver since this artwork has a weird perspective. It's a bit pricey, but I think it's really worth it. After making the line art, the next thing I do is to add the base color for the scene. I actually created a mood board in Pinterest where I have tons of reference images and artworks by other artists that I find really interesting. Mood board helps me to gather some ideas and inspiration before I actually start drawing or coloring. So for example, I can check my sky mood board to help me find a reference color or image for my sky. I also use the Adobe Color Themes extension built into Photoshop where I can search for specific color palettes I need. Since I need a color palette for night sky, I just type in night sky and it will show those color palettes in the result. I'm not sure what version of Photoshop has this extension, but if you cannot see it in your Photoshop, you can just visit the website version that functions the same as the extension. There are times when I'm coloring a night scene I find myself struggling to find the right color for a certain element to match the surrounding color. So whenever I'm struggling with that, what I do is I color the element using its natural color first and then adding another layer on top of it, create a clipping mask, fill it with the color of the sky, and set the blending mode to multiply. Then just adjust the opacity until you find the color that fits into your scene. You can try it if you're like me struggling to find the matching color for the scene. I hope you will find it useful. Once the base color is set up, the next thing I do is to add details to the scene. This is where I add textures to the signages, add clouds in the sky, lights in the buildings and the lamp, and other details in the scene. To be honest, this is the most tedious part of the process, especially making these buildings. This is so detailed, but this is also my favorite part. So yeah, I'm enjoying it. For the brushes, I mostly use the default brush in Photoshop to create the clouds and the texture. I just made some adjustment to the brush settings to accommodate my needs. And the last step, adding the comet into the sky. I use the color blue, the purple, and the green, and I set the blending mode to color dodge and screen to make it look like it is glowing. This also represents the cool color that I mentioned earlier. And so to contrast the comet with Edsa, I added warm colors like red and orange below. I also adjusted the color of the signage to reflect the warm colors underneath it. And that's how color contrast can help the artwork feel more, you know, dynamic. The cool blue color of the sky and the comet that represents magic and beauty is contrasting the warm and the fiery color of the traffic in Edsa. Also, if you notice, the clouds covering the tail of the comet is a bit darker than the other clouds. That is because that's what happens in real life. The clouds become dark and only its edges are shining. It is called rim light and honestly I don't know the science behind it but it's just how it is. And finally, I added lens blur to the bottom part of the frame to imitate depth of field like in a camera. I think it's a nice touch to add depth to the scene. So that's it. That is my process of making this artwork from start to finish. I really hope that you learn something and I do hope that it inspires you to do your own artwork and to never stop creating. Please don't stop creating. Thank you so much for spending your precious time watching this process and I hope to see you again in my next video. Take care.